They said we couldn't compete with the richest schools in the nation. The Washington boat has taken the lead. Washington has done it. I got nine seconds under the course record. Olympic year this year. Olympic year? I didn't realize. That bunch of kids rode like no one else that's ever come through here. Everybody else tires and just gets stronger. We have a boat that I believe could qualify for an Olympic spot. George, this movie really for me works on two different levels. I think really? it's kind of a yes, it's kind of a timeless yeah. lesson on teamwork and you know, kind of working it all out as a group. Mm -hmm. It's also in a great tradition of kind of beautiful throwback period sports films like a Sea Biscuit or Field of Dreams even. How did you want to balance those two different elements? Well, I don't know. We, we all kind of like sports films. You know, um, Hoosiers is a big one. Uh, sure. um, the natural films like that. We had an advantage because it's a true story. Like all the things that you see in here uh, happened, so we didn't have to cheat them. You know, they, the kid really got sick. The <laughs> coach, the other coach, gave them the money. They missed the start. Um, you know, all of those things happen. So if it, it helps a little bit, it makes it easier, so that you know you don't get sort of stuck trying to make the story better. I mean, Grant, obviously the the source material, the book by Daniel James Brown. People just revere this book. What was it about it that you wanted to kind of make sure, obviously you can't get every aspect of the book into a two, two hour film, but what was most important to you that it, it came through? The book is just a, it's a beautiful book about the, the you know, the, the, the human spirit. And um, our job was really to not mess it up, you know? Yeah. It was to try to, um, we, we stuck to the story very closely. The hardest part really was just kind of condensing it. Joel. Ulbrichsen is not the typically inspirational coach, right? <laughs> he's he's uh, he's spare with his words. Why do you think he was effective, and what did you most enjoy about playing him? I've always sort of been fascinated by coaches that that appear to derive zero joy from their job, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's always been a clue that they care more than everybody else. You know, I, I think there was something great about the script laying that out, that he was a little bit more removed, almost like a like a, a hard to reach dad. His vision in the beginning is really just about the mechanics of putting eight different bodies in a boat and working it all out in a kind of a mathematical way. And his speeches reflect that. And then moving towards, the, you know, this, this place of actually understanding each, each of the boys more individually and seeing their personalities and 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 therefore cracking open a little bit of warmth you know and love Callum from your point of view with in the casting process and talking to George and Grant was it more them convincing you that they could make you into someone who could row convincingly or was it you convincing them that you were like in good enough shape to take on a role like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you Callum. Go, it's a long, we don't have be honest. time for this answer. <laughs> you know, I basically sent in a tape. It was a pretty straightforward process, and I go on a Skype with uh, George and Grant, and, um, you know, the truth is that George and Grant, they set us up to succeed. You know, it was the closest experience I'll ever have to being part of a professional sports team. We had a, a trainer that won uh, gold at Atlanta for rowing, and uh, we went down to Radley. Their um, facilities are second to none. Uh, you know, it was, a, it was a wonderful time and a special, special experience. I don't think I'll ever have anything like that on a film again. Tanya, I want to give you so much credit because your editing on this is phenomenal. It's unbelievable. How did you get to a point together that it felt like it was enough, exciting, without going overboard? We did a rough assembly, we made sure we hit the right plot points, and then we just evolved it from there, and, and we would try things, and George would watch it, and he'd just email me. We were on different time zones at the time when we finished cutting the Olympics, and he was just like, I like it, just keep cutting, just add more cuts, and, and it just, it, it was different from the other two races because it, we did escalate that and, and go quicker, 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 and, and so I think that, and then we built to those beautiful uh, homage to Lenny Riefenstahl's shots where, you know, there's so many things in that race that happened that you're, we were afraid we would, you know, hit the height too early. Yeah. So it was really important for us to make sure that, that the tension grew and grew and grew until we hit that last set of shots before the photo finish. All of the racing scenes were shot chronologically. So we as an audience see 
you guys basically getting better and getting stronger. Do you think it would have been just as good if it hadn't been shot that way, or was that necessary? No, <laughs> because we wouldn't have been as good. And, and, and I meant that when I said that these guys set us up to succeed, they, they scheduled those races for the last month, last three weeks, I, I think, of, of the shoot. So we were in peak physical condition and we were in the best moment in our rowing. And, uh, you know, five months feels like a long time, but we were all learning a new skill for the first time, which is hard enough. Rowing is an, an excruciating skill to learn. It's so difficult. Um, but we were also learning to surrender our identities and become one, which was probably the hardest part. And you see that nine actors. Are you kidding? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you see that in the film, you know, when 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 Joe falls out of that sink, the boat suffers. And, 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 and that was true for for us, too. And uh, we set ourselves the target of the 46 strokes per minute, which the guys do in, in Berlin. Uh, at the beginning and, and, and boy, it just felt like it was an impossible thing to achieve. Mm. And the closer we got to the end, the further it, away it felt. And then on the second last day, we were, we were doing that race and we were really in it and, and, and we hit that 46, which, uh, you know, we're, we're making a movie alongside <laughs> learning how to row and trying to do this thing. And uh, there was, there was a, it was just euphoric in the boat for us to be able to have done that. And, and together, and, and actually that's the beautiful thing about rowing, is that it's a team sport unlike any other. And uh, you really do have to sacrifice yourself for the greater good. George, I know there's like a perfect storm joke here, but oh, I also yeah. get the sense that you maybe underestimated the challenges of shooting on the water. Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't underestimate I did perfect storm for nine <laughs> fucking months. <laughs> I was, I've been in the water, but I forgot. I'm old, man, I forgot. And I got out there and... We started, you know, doing storyboards and shit on this, and I'm like, yeah, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. And, you know, the, just the things of, like, that the boats themselves, just to, just for the start, you have eight boats lined up and the wind is blowing. You can't, They're all going like this. We had scuba divers underneath the thing holding the boat, like, you know, just to try and just to get a start off. It was a nightmare. But, you know, you it, you know, ignorance is bliss. Forgetting things, it's, it's really helpful at times, you know. <laughs> Joel, from your point of view, when all of these young actors were like going through the intense training, how much did you step in and show solidarity by, you know, doing all the workouts with Can them? Can I answer this? <laughs> yeah. There wasn't much solidarity. The solidarity was watching George and Joel and Grant drink red wine as we rode past. <laughs> Busting a guy. Boys in the bar. Boys in the um, bar. Another that's, a, that's our sequel. The, uh, with all seriousness, though, I, you know, I've been through that process of training hard for a movie, and, and, you know, and then I was like, oh, now I'm the coach, which means I'm getting a bit older. And, um, but then watch, turning up to the, to the river and watching these guys all you know, put in the hard work and watching the evolution and, and their whole demeanor and skill set shift and them galvanize as a team and... I, I was I, I knew that it was going to be a great experience for them through the pain and it was just a real pleasure to watch them go through that experience and mm. not have to be them as well <laughs> of course uh, I, I, I was I was very uh, envious of them in, in many ways and it was very impressive Tanya when you think I mean you you've have so many interesting credits and so many different things that you've done in your career when you think back to this particularly some of the racing sequences does this rank up there as one of the more challenging jobs that you've had? I don't think it was challenging in that the footage was fantastic, the performances were, like, I had so much wonderful clay to work with, and obviously working with Grant and George is totally a pleasure. But, you know, it's something that I'd never done before. I'd cut action sequences in the past, but this was special. It was totally different, and, and um, it was extraordinarily gratifying when we finally got to a place where we're like, yeah, we got this. Yeah. And now that we're hearing audiences clap and and enjoy the film it's 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 just feels even better it's fun to watch like we were in seattle we screened in seattle packed house you know a bunch of rowers there and it's fun to watch the audience row the, you know, those, <laughs> <laughs> which is really pretty you know awesome. so you, you you get a movie and a workout yeah, nice yes that's good <laughs> grant are you i hope i'm not about to put my foot in my mouth here is so yeah. daniel, i hope you are daniel james brown is with us Still, or has oh he, yeah yeah okay has he's he's Back. the guy that wrote the book, has he seen it? Has oh he my god it? yeah he's seen it he's seen it a bunch he lo he loved it I mean look that's always the scariest thing is to show it to the, the author because if they don't like it then you feel like you're in trouble 
Um, but we screened it for him over at Warner Brothers, kind of a, a, a family and friend screening, and he 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 was weeping. Mm. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, that's always dangerous too, you know. When the <laughs> author weeps. You know, Grant and Tanya and I have you know because it's a beloved book, you know. Yeah. But we also did Catch Twenty Two, the three of us. So you know, but but Heller's dead. So you know, how much shit can you get from him? <laughs> um, so it was you know. So we were very concerned about that because yeah. if we got that wrong, we were going to get in trouble. And we we showed it uh, when we were up in Seattle. Uh, Joe Rance's daughter was there, and uh, some of Pocock's family was there, and. You know, they, his family with yeah. it's a love letter. This this film. Yeah. Uh, final thing, George. I know over talking to you over the years, I remember you've said to me that it was a goal of yours to get to a point, which you clearly have, where you could direct films without the studio saying, "Well, you have to also be in it." No, for us, I to think I've it. aged out of that. <laughs> well, but here you are, in, not in this. But also, like here's Scorsese doing a little bit part at the end of Killers of the Flower Moon, like. Would you now consider doing like a Hitchcock-esque cameo in your Walking films? Walking through, that's all I'm allowed to do anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, Scorsese's working his way backwards. He wants to act again. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, there was no, nothing for me to play that I wouldn't, it wouldn't have been distracting. And uh, we had such wonderful actors. It's a lot easier than, you know, directing yourself. So no, I'm not gonna, <laughs> you know, unless like Lifeboat with Hitchcock, where you put yourself in the newspaper. Sure, there you go. That's, that, that Something to okay. consider for next time. I congratulate you all. It's a beautiful film. It's so exciting. George, Callum, Joel, Grant, Tanya, well Thanks, done. Guys. Thanks Thank you. Thanks out. so much for sticking around. Get some sleep. Have a great night.